What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Cyber Kill Chain. The Cyber Kill Chain is the third framework as part of the Cyber Threat Intelligence frameworks. We talked about Cyber Threat Intelligence, if you remember, in the past videos. We talked about the frameworks. We went through the diamond model. And in the previous video, we went through the Unified Kill Chain. And today in this video, we're going to go over the cyber kill chain. Again, these frameworks, they do not compete, rather they com they complement each other. So you can select any of these frameworks and apply it to your uh, threat intelligence plan or project. So let's talk about today the cyber kill chain. The cyber kill chain is a very prominent kill chain in mimicking the attacker's behavior and protecting networks. I guess you have heard about cyber uh, kill chain before. If you study threat intelligence or maybe network security or maybe ethical hacking. Okay, let's talk about the kill chain today. So basically, we have around seven phases in the cyber kill chains. Seven phases through which attacker goes through to achieve their objectives. As a security analyst, us, we go also three uh, through these seven phases, understand the capabilities, understand the tactics and the procedure the attacker has used, and at the same time to assess our security controls. So we remember in the kill unified kill chain, we had 18 phases, and we said that the unified kill chain is way more detailed than the cyber kill chain. So, but it doesn't mean that you cannot use the cyber kill chain and uh, you also go for do not fail unified kill chain. No you select actually what uh, fits your organization model or fits your scenario. So we have seven phases. Let's start with the phase one. So phase one, as always, it's the recon phase. And it's the same phase in the unified kill chain. If you remember, we have the same phase, recon phase. And again, in this phase, we are after information. We gather information about the target. This information can be ports, servers, emails, contacts, uh, names, network topology, credentials. The same can be said about the reconnaissance phase in the cyber kill chain. Now, one uh, thing to add is that part of the recon, so basically here we use how to gather the information. We use public sources, search engines, social media accounts, or if you want to do that, automatically, you can use the OSINT framework. So OSINT stands for Open Source Intelligence. Open Source Intelligence is the use of public sources, information, to gather data about your target. Now, there are many tools available in Kali Linux that you can use to apply OSINT, or you can use the graphical GUI interface. Uh, you can go Google and type OSINT frameworks, you will use the online version. Okay. So, let's say one example of gathering information. So, we talked about some examples here about our data can be gathered. Now, an example process is email harvesting. So, email harvesting is the process of gathering emails <coughs> about specific targets company, organization, or individual. So basically, email harvesting, uh, we have tools for email harvesting. For example, we have the Harvester command line tool available in Kali Linux. And we have also the OSINT framework online version, but it is a graphical GUI interface. You can use, you can use one, you can use two, depending on the scenario and the output you get uh, by running each one of these tools individually. So email harvesting relies on the fact that you have to provide domain as an input. Say you want to gather emails about try hack me. Right. So how to do that? You can run harvester or recent framework to supply the domain as an input and hopefully you will get the emails of the personal. Now that's an example of the reconnaissance phase. So why the information are valuable here? The information gathered in the reconnaissance phase will be used later later in the following phases. So 
domains, IP addresses, websites, emails, all will be, all will come to use in the later stages. So now next we have the next stage. The next stage is the weaponization. Weaponization. So in the Unified Kill Chain, if you go back to Unified Kill Chain here, <coughs> we said in the weaponization that we, uh, we repair the command and control servers, repair the virtuals. The same goes here, repair command and control servers. So basically we prepare C2, we prepare reverse shells, we also prepare payloads, we can also prepare um, malware. So actually we provide or prepare the infrastructure that we will use for the attack. Okay, now there is <coughs> here a distinction in, in when it comes to some terms. For example, we have malware, okay, we have exploit, and we have <coughs> the payload. So what's the difference between all of these? So the malware is the actual code that's used to gain unauthorized access to the system. It's the malicious code. Okay. Now, exploit is also a malicious code. Okay. But it's used to exploit a vulnerability. In no way we can say that malware is the same as exploit or exploit is the same as malware. Sometimes malwares can rely or can include exploits in the code to exploit specific vulnerability. But the final purpose of a malware is different from the exploit. The malware uh, objective is to gain access or maybe to disrupt the system, damage the system. But exploit is to exploit a specific vulnerability. But vulnerability can be um, zero day or can be public vulnerability like has already been used before now let's come to the payload so what's the payload the payload is actually the code that carries or let's say it's the carrier so it is the carrier I like to call it the carrier so it carries your exploit or malware to the system. So basically the malware or exploit will be executed in the system through the payload. You send the payload and the payload will carry your malware or the exploit and does a job in the system. Okay, so that is the weaponization and the difference between these terms. So what are live examples of weaponization? So for example, an example of weaponization is that you prepare an office document. Okay, inside the office document, you will include macros. The macros sometimes, usually, execute malicious code. Now, here, you what you will do, you will tailor or craft your malicious code, embed it into macros and send the office document to the victim. So basically the office document here is the, we can call it the payload and here the malicious code is the actual code that will ex be executed on the system. So you can customize your code depending on what you want to do. It can be reverse shell, command and control, okay, it can be C2, it can be um, exploit, it can be malware, right? Depending on what's in what stage you are in the cyber kill chain. So that's an example of weaponization. We prepare the payload along with the malware or the exploit. Okay, now let's talk about the third stage in the cyber kill chain. The third stage, it is the delivery. Let's go back to the unified kill chain. So as you can see, the common phrases between the unified kill chain and the cyber kill chain are the recon and the weaponization. After the weaponization, these frameworks they start to part ways. For example, social engineering is the third phase, while in cyber kill chain it's the delivery. Now, 
social engineering can be viewed as a method from the perspective of the cyber kill chain. The cyber kill chain is actually more uh, generic about these terms. So when it says delivery, it means yeah, you can use social engineering, you can use USB, you can use physical attacks, whatever you see fit the scenario. But here it's detailed. It says the, th the third stage must be social engineering. So in the delivery, in the cyber kill chain here, how, what's the delivery? The delivery is the actual, after we gathered information, no, okay. Let's cancel this one. Okay, so the delivery is with the delivery of the payload okay to the victim so we gathered say email address okay and we prepared an office document the delivery he will deliver the payload to the target email address what are examples of delivery okay so first one is the phishing emails you send an email okay to an employee pretending to be an, another employee or support personnel that's example of phishing email normally it includes attachments Okay, normal, but doesn't mean it will include attachments all the time. Sometimes it's only phishing email that's after your uh, credentials or credit card information. The third one is the USB drop attack or drop down attack. Let's say drop down, drop. So basically you prepare USB, inside the USB you put your malware and then you drop uh, like five ten x number of copies of the usbs uh, around the uh, target area so that people will pick it up and insert it in their computer and the last one is watering hole attack so in the watering hole attack let's explain this so what happens here is that you have a website x.com and here you have website y.com, right? Okay, so the attacker, let's say the attacker controls y.com. Say it's their own website. And the attackers want to redirect visitors of x.com. So here are visitors. They want to redirect these visitors to their site, to y.com. What they would do they will, to achieve this, they will exploit x.com exploit a vulnerability in x.com if there is, okay so that all visitors who come to x.com will be redirected to y.com and when they visit y.com they will be prompted to so after y.com they will be asked to um, say here pop-ups to download malware it happens a lot in the malvertising campaigns. So that is the weaponization phase. We think of methods to deliver the payload. Now, technically, all of these methods are some sort of social engineering. Some sort of social engineering, not everything. Because sometimes social engineering can happen over the phone or can happen verbally through a conversation. Okay. Now let's go to the next phase. Next phase is the exploitation phase. All right, let's go back to the unified kill chain now. So, social engineering is different between these two, although technically they are the same. Now, exploitation is also the same in both uh, frameworks. Now, in exploitation, what happens here, guys? What do we do here? So in exploitation, we either we perform the exploitation either prior gaining access to the target, okay, or post access or post compromise, let's say. So why we have two distinctions? Sometimes after you gather, after you go through the recon, okay, you, you do the weaponization, you discover, before the delivery, you discover that the website is, say, x.com is vulnerable to a CVE, has a CVE, right? 
and the CVA can be easily exploited to gain access. So here, we stepped right away to the exploitation phase without the need to go through delivery. Okay, uh, sorry, yeah, delivery. No need to go to deliver here. Maybe we actually applied some sort of watering hole attack, but actually we didn't go through delivery if we remotely exploited or found a vulnerability in x.com and exploited the vulnerability to remotely to gain access. So exploitation can happen prior gaining access to the system. Okay. What about post-compromise? Again, exploitation can happen post-compromise. How? So let's put a row here. Okay. Now, to perform, sometimes when you gain access to a system, you start enumerating the system to understand more about the environment and what are the possible vulnerabilities that that may have. So sometimes you discover a CVE inside the system that will allow you to do privilege escalation. Okay, so post-compromised exploitation can include exploiting a CVE in the system to elevate your privileges. Okay, now, what about zero days? So zero days as well. Zero day is a type of vulnerability that doesn't have a patch. Okay, so basically that's why it's called zero day. There is no solution to this vulnerability at the day of the discovery. So zero days can be discovered after gaining access and they will lead to they will lead to privileged escalation or prior to gaining access and can lead to initial foothold, let's say here. So they can be used to privilege to escalate privileges or they can be used to gain foothold. So that's the exploitation part of this, or that's the exploitation stage. Let's go now to the next stage. So the next stage is the installation. Let's go back to the Nified Guild Chain and see what's the corresponding phase. So, Organization, Social Engineering, Exploitation, Persistence. So that's the phase that we can match uh, in the Unified Guild Chain to the Cyber Guild Chain. Actually, if we go back again, we have Persistence, the fifth stage, Defense Evasion, so maybe defense evasion and persistence are the same as an installation here in cyber kill chain. Can be two stages from there can be matched in cyber kill chain, the sixth stage. So, what is the installation? An installation here is all about one thing: persistence or to maintain access to the system. So let's say, for example, we have a Linux system. Attacker gained access to the system here, okay, and then let's say this happened one The system got patched uh, Or the Payload or the malware or the infection got removed Or the system restarted what will happen? What will happen is that if these one of these one of these catalysts actually intervened in the process, you would lose access immediately. That's where installation comes to the rescue. So what happens here is that attacker realizes and they and they know that one of these items can happen. So what they will do, they will seek to maintain their access. So basically, one of the ways to maintain access first is to create a web shell. Specifically, if you are or if you have exploited a web server. So you install the web shell on the web server. The web shell, shell can be accessed remotely. An example would be x.com slash shell. You would navigate to this path all the time, every time, and you would be able to execute commands on the system. That's one. Next, we have backdoors. So backdoors come in all formats. It can be 
exe it can be um, it can be scripts okay like PowerShell Python it can be office documents so what happens the backdoor okay will execute at the startup or when the system starts and communicate back with your C2 server so that you will be able to send and receive commands or three we use the startup actually it's the part of the backdoor so I'm not going to mention this now so we have two methods backdoors or web shells and several other methods basically but these are the most two popular methods backdoors or web shells to maintain your access that's why the installation is matched to persistence from the defined kill chain and defense evasion. Why defense evasion? So basically, some systems contain antiviruses or security solutions. So what you would do, you want your backdoor to evade antiviruses, evade AVs. You want your web shell to evade firewalls. Okay, that's why. <coughs> Web shells are effective because they communicate through port 80 and 443. These two ports cannot be blocked by any firewall because they are part of a normal traffic. And for backdoors, we talked about obfuscation methods. Obfuscation methods are applied to evade antivirus solutions. You can go back to the videos I created about obfuscation methods to understand more how to evade antivirus solutions. Okay, now the seventh phase. So a new page. The seventh phase is the command and control. Okay, now command and control is the process of sending and receiving commands from and to a victim system. For example, let's say here is the attacker and here is the victim machine. Okay, now attacker has set up C2 server here we call it sometimes C2. So C2 server will send commands to the victim machine. The victim machine will execute and then the output, here you have output, is sent back to the C2 server. You would see a live example of this when you use reverse shells. So basically when you set up a reversal or begin access to a system through reversal you are doing some sort of c2 you are sending commands and receiving output in return uh, but in this stage it's supposed to happen after you have installed the malware so basically the command control here is achieved by installing the malware the backdoor and starting receiving commands starting sending and receiving commands between you and the victim system okay now let's see what's the corresponding stage. So seven, the same command and control. Okay. Now the last stage in the cyber kill chain is the action on objectives. So eight actions on objectives. So here the attacker executes the strategic plan of their entire attack. So why did they conduct the attack in the first place? It becomes clear in this stage. What are some of the actions that they would do? First thing, they would dump credentials, system credentials, Windows, Linux, whatever. They would escalate the privileges, right? Sometimes they want only to escalate privileges and maintain administrative access on the system for a long period of time. They are not interested in stealing data. They would not be interested in stealing credentials. They just want to uh, censor your activity. So they will, that's what they will do. The third one is data exfiltration. Data exfiltration is the process of moving the victim's data can be individual organization of the network to the attacker's controlled file storage. That's how they steal data. Sometimes their objective is to um, wipe out your data, causing damage to the system. So we call this damage. 
they just want to cause you damage they want to ruin your business or sometimes they would overwrite existing data with rubbish data sometimes they would encrypt your data they want to deprive you of, ac of uh, data access so they would encrypt your data using normally normally they would use something called ransomware these are some of the actions that they would take once they uh, their access is stable on the system now if you go back to the unified kill chain we see way way more um, stages after the command and control we see pivoting lateral movement uh, discovery like discovering other systems privilege escalation execution of scripts credential access lateral movement collection of information exfiltration impact here the impact is the, uh, the impact that the attack has left on the target system and the objectives all of these additional extra phases you see in the unified kill chain are actually most of them included in these in the uh, cyber kill chain phases but th the thing is the cyber kill chain is more generic that's why we make the distinct between the kill chain and the cyber kill chain only by the, the level of deepness they go uh, they have in the uh, stages so that was for the cyber kill chain now it's time to take a practical example okay so deploy site so here we have these examples or scenarios we have to match them to the appropriate kill chain phase so here we start re recon weaponization delivery okay exploitation and installation and lastly here we have here actions and objective and here we have command and control so we have to match these to the corresponding stage let's start with the first one exploiting a public facing application so it's very clear it is exploitation phase so we put that here data from local system PowerShell dynamic linker hijacking spear phishing attachment fallback channels sometimes uh, these items some of these items cannot be clear so you have to read through the other items to understand how to match them to the correct stage so data from local system it's fairly clear that this is meant to be data exfiltration so we put that as the last stage actions on objective PowerShell let's leave that dynamic linker hijacking let's, let's leave that we have spear phishing attachment and we said that phishing is conducted in the, the delivery stage so the delivery is here okay fallback channels dynamic linker hijacking PowerShell fallback channels is another term for the C2 servers so it's here and we have PowerShell and dynamic linker hijacking so PowerShell is a form of can be used to create payloads so we put it in the weaponization and dynamic linker hijacking it's actually DLL hijacking is a method to um, hijack a specific service and install malware so basically we put that in the installation phase and we check the answers you get the flag so that was it guys i hope you liked the series and i will definitely see you in the next video